because of its many uses, ammonia is one of the most highly produced inorganic chemicals. There are numerous large-scale ammonia production plants worldwide, producing a total of 131 million tons of nitrogen in 2010. China produced 32.1% of the worldwide production, followed by India with 8.9%, Russia with 7.9%, and the United States with 6.3%. 80% or more of the ammonia produced is used for fertilizing agricultural crops. Ammonia is also used for the production of plastics, fibers, explosives, nitric acid and intermediates for dyes and pharmaceuticals. History Before the start of World War I, most ammonia was obtained by the dry distillation of nitrogenous vegetable and animal products. By the reduction of nitrous acid and nitrites with hydrogen and also by the decomposition of ammonium salts by alkaline hydroxides or by quicklime, the salt most generally used being the chloride. Today, most ammonia is produced on a large scale by the Haber process with capacities of up to 3,300 metric tons per day. 1. Ammonia is manufactured on a large scale by Haber's process. 2. In this process, N2 and H2 gases are allowed to react at high pressure of 200 bar. Modern ammonia producing plants. A typical modern ammonia producing plant first converts natural gas or LPG or petroleum naphtha into gaseous hydrogen. The method for producing hydrogen from hydrocarbons is referred to as steam reforming. The hydrogen is then combined with nitrogen to produce ammonia via the Haber Bosch process. Starting with a natural gas feedstock, the processes used in producing the hydrogen are the first step in the process is to remove sulfur compounds from the feedstock because sulfur deactivates the catalysts used in subsequent steps. Sulfur removal requires catalytic hydrogenation to convert sulfur compounds in the feedstocks to gaseous hydrogen sulfide. H2 plus RSHRH plus H2S, gas. The gaseous hydrogen sulfide is then adsorbed and removed by passing it through beds of zinc oxide where it is converted to solid zinc sulfide. H2S plus ZNO or ZNS plus H2O. Catalytic steam reforming of the sulfur-free feedstock is then used to form hydrogen plus carbon monoxide. CH4 plus H2O or CO plus 3 hours 2. The next step then uses catalytic shift conversion to convert the carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide and more hydrogen. CO plus H2O or CO2 plus H2. The carbon dioxide is then removed either by absorption in aqueous ethanolamine solutions or by adsorption in pressure swing adsorbers using proprietary solid adsorption media. The final step in producing the hydrogen is to use catalytic methanation to remove any small residual amounts of carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide from the hydrogen. CO plus 3 hours to a CH4 plus H2O, CO2 plus 4 hours to a CH4 plus 2 hours 2O. To produce the desired end product ammonia, the hydrogen is then catalytically reacted with nitrogen to form anhydrous liquid ammonia. This step is known as the ammonia synthesis loop. 3 hours 2 plus N2 or 2 NH3. Due to the nature of the catalyst used in the ammonia synthesis reaction, only very low levels of oxygen containing compounds can be tolerated in the synthesis gas. Relatively pure nitrogen can be obtained by air separation, but additional oxygen removal may be required. Because of relatively low single pass conversion rates, a large recycle stream is required. This can lead to the accumulation of inerts in the loop gas. The steam reforming, shift conversion, carbon dioxide removal and methanation steps each operate at absolute pressures of about 25 to 35 bar, and the ammonia synthesis loop operates at absolute pressures ranging from 60 to 180 bar depending upon which proprietary design is used. There are many engineering and construction companies that offer proprietary designs for ammonia synthesis plants. Holdor Topsu of Denmark, ThyssenKrupp Industrial Solutions GmbH of Germany, Ammonia Casale of Switzerland and Kellogg Brown and Root of the United States are among the most experienced companies in that field. Sustainable Ammonia Production Ammonia production depends on plentiful supplies of energy, predominantly natural gas. Due to ammonia's critical role in intensive agriculture and other processes, 
sustainable production is desirable. This is possible by using renewable energy to generate hydrogen by electrolysis of water. This would be straightforward in a hydrogen economy by diverting some hydrogen production from fuel to feedstock use. For example, in 2002, Iceland produced 2,000 tons of hydrogen gas by electrolysis, using excess electricity production from its hydroelectric plants, primarily for the production of ammonia for fertilizer. The Vemork hydroelectric plant in Norway used its surplus electricity output to generate renewable ammonia from 1911 to 1971. In practice, natural gas will remain the major source of hydrogen for ammonia production as long as it is cheapest. As an alternative to the relatively inefficient electrolysis, hydrogen can be generated from organic wastes, using catalytic reforming. This releases hydrogen from carbonaceous substances at only 10 to 20 percent of energy used by electrolysis and may lead to hydrogen being produced from municipal wastes at below zero cost. Catalytic reforming is possible in small, distributed plants to take advantage of stranded biomass bio-wastes or natural gas deposits. Conversion of such wastes into ammonia solves the problem of hydrogen storage, as hydrogen can be released economically from ammonia on demand, without the need for high pressure or cryogenic storage. It is also easier to store ammonia on board of vehicles than to store hydrogen, as ammonia is less flammable than gasoline or LPG. Wastewater is often high in ammonia because discharging ammonia-laden water into the environment can cause problems, nitrification is often necessary to remove the ammonia. This may be a potentially sustainable source of ammonia in the future because of its abundance and the need to remove it from the water anyway. See also, ammonia, and um, gas treating, Haber process. References External links, Today's Hydrogen Production Industry Energy use and energy intensity of the U.S. chemical industry, Report LBNL 44314, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, Ammonia, the next step includes a detailed process flow diagram. Ammonia production process plant flow sheet in brief with three controls.